So today I want to work on some simpler stuff, simpler, more simple stuff with turn zero. I want to look at the mine level. So we have a mechanic here where you have to go to each of these mine carts to flip a switch to then get this trap to deactivate to leave. I'm wondering if maybe we need to have a key to be able to unlock the switches. I don't know. Maybe that's overkill. I just realized these characters are, or these events are not named. So we're just going to fix that real quick. And then I was, start, I was thinking about how other roguelikes handle certain parts of progression. Games like Dead Cells really rely on your gold value. You're using gold to grab items you're using gold to unlock different power-ups i think that i would like to go that way i'm not really sure what i want to call the gold value or our currency basically like i'm not really sure what i want to call that also that's in the settings somewhere i i know i'm on the i'm pretty sure i'm on the right page i'm just completely missing it now that's just gonna drive me nuts there it is i'm not sure what what we should call the gold currency you know we could just straight up rip off dead cells and call it souls, but I don't really want to do that. How long of a name can you make it? Could we call it data fragments? Or I guess we could just call it DF for short, huh? We we'll call it data fragments. We'll do that for now. We'll do that for now. I want to look at making these treasure chests cost money to open so that you have to engage with the enemies. I, I, I think that's, you know, what a lot of other roguelike games essentially came up with is that you know you have to like you want the player to engage with the enemies what better way to do that than to have them you know fight enemies for gold to then gain the weapons or the power-ups or whatever so let's go ahead and give this a play test just to kind of see where we left things off and then we'll sort of go from there tamarin where are you going oh come back oh this window skin's way too bright well there's our first issue right there we have troops set up through here, but we need to disable them in our enter process. So let's go ahead and do new change encounter and disable. Put a new comment in here, just kind of pointing that out. Let's give it another play test here. Now that we fix that, we got it. Never mind. We got to change this window skin. Oh God, it, it's it's horrible. Can we go purple? We had purple and I, I messed it up. All right, let's try that. That might still be too bright, but we'll see. This looks a little better. Let's go ahead and choose Tamron here. Okay, so it looks like enemy counters have been disabled. We're moving around. No encounters here, so that's good. Minor health file. See, we're just getting stuff for free, which doesn't seem like a great design. Receive the blue orb. Minor health file. See, we've also got this teleporter event here, which is not great. Let's go ahead and get to a battle. Why is this? Okay, it is moving. It was just trying to move in the wrong direction multiple times. Oh my god, her magic attack is insanely good. She might be a little overtuned. I mean, mm, do we want... We, we probably want the magic to one-shot though, right? You can give enemies resistances. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely have given a couple of them weaknesses. I haven't given any of them resistances yet. But I, I probably will do that. That's a good idea. So one thing right off the bat is we need to fix this, this area. I, I want a mechanic for each floor. To allow you to go to the next floor i'm not really about the random exit and ed entrance with like the key item uh anymore oh that's a good piece of equipment for her so let's go ahead and leave here we'll go ahead and fight the guardian crow jesus thunder 2 on the guardian crow is so good but i don't know maybe we don't need to tune it because she's already at half health we didn't really get many healing items i think we got one he two healing items okay i'm wrong two healing items all right, let's test out the mechanic for the mine shaft here. So we try to leave and there's a trap. Jagged spikes are preventing your passage through here. We need to fix this text. Perhaps there's a hidden switch or two that can deactivate them. So let's go to each of these. There's a switch underneath the car. Would you like to flip it? Yes. Yes. Should be two more carts. Yes. And yes. So now that we've flipped all the switches, we will, I guess, grab these treasure chests on our way through here, and then we'll try to leave. Spikes should be deactivated. We are loaded on health files. And there we go. Would you like to leave the mine? Yes. 
And then I believe this mechanic was you were supposed to touch all of the crystals and change their colors. And then after you change all their colors, it unlocks a crystal in the center here, if I remember correctly. Also, there's the blue orb. We still have that on this map. There we go. Do you like to fight the guardian of the exit? Let's just skip it. All right, so there's a few things we need to fix. Um... Let's go ahead and edit this text while we're here perhaps needs to go on the next line we'll bring this back man not having arrow keys on this keyboard is like hurting me more than i thought it would to be honest with you i bought a 60 percent keyboard to game with and i am really missing my arrow keys we need to go ahead and get rid of the teleporter out of this floor because that mechanic is not valid also at each one of these i want to could we just cut this? Let's do that. Let's cut this and then let's make this a common event. So we'll do mine cart. There we go. And then when we need to change all of these, we don't have to change every individual one, you know? All right. Now that we have changed all of the mine cart events over to common events, let's go into the common event. And when yes, we want to play a sound effect. I know there's like a, I think there's a switch sound effect in here. We've used this before. This one's almost too subtle. Maybe. Yeah, I think it, mm, let's try it up. Let's pitch it up just a little bit more. Nah, I think 60. Yeah, I think that's where I want it. Okay, so that's a nice little touch. So I'm just kind of brainstorming out loud. I think we want types of treasure chests, right? Like we want there to be an item chest, a weapon chest, what an armor chest. Because I feel like if you put all of the loot into one kind of chest, you could have runs that are just absolutely terrible because you don't get the right type of equipment. And also, I think we want you to unlock getting those chests to spawn, right? So maybe you don't get the item chest to spawn right off the bat. That's a thing that you get after you reach like, I don't know, the fifth floor. We could do it one of two ways, right? We could have the player unlock the ability to find item chests by default or have it earlier in the game. Or we could give the player a starter kit of items that they always spawn with. And then that way, that starter kit can maybe get them to floor 10 and then they can unlock their first style of chest. What do you what do you think? What do you think would be better? I kind of like the starter kit option. Like maybe you start with one health vial and one magic vial. Um, they already start each character already starts with a basic set of equipment like they're just weapon and armor. That's all they start with. So I wonder if maybe starting off with one health vial and one magic vial would be worthwhile i kind of like that idea you don't want to start them with like a thousand and write a really small shop event the roguelike games that i liked the most how they handled it and the, the the two that immediately come to mind are dead cells and risk of rain 2. dead cells if i remember right just starts you off and i think you only have a choice between like it's like a sword and a shield right or like a sword and a bow i think those are your only two options and I don't, you don't start with any gold or anything. They just like, you pick your first weapon and then you just go right in. Um, but you have the ability to grab powerful stuff, like more weapons and stuff along the way. Risk of Rain 2 starts you off immediately with nothing. You just have a base set of abilities. As you defeat enemies, you get money to unlock random treasure chests that you find across the ground. Let's, let, let's try the starter, a uh, certain amount of cash, yeah, let's let, let's try that. Let's see how that plays. We'll increase their gold by 1000. Okay. And then I also want to change this to lowercase df. I'm not really sure why I want to do that, but we're going to try that. And then this is already set to be a shopkeeper. Let's see 300 would get you your like second tier of weapon. Maybe we change these prices to 700 for your second tier of weapon. And then we add items in there at 150. So you could buy your first like second tier weapon. And then you could buy like two healing or two healing potions or two magic potions or one of each. Let's do that. Uh, we need to add the items in there. Minor health, minor magic. Let's go into the database here and we'll change the fire staff to 700. This would be another case where 
my fun having my function keys um or my f keys available without having to hold the shortcut button would be much faster to edit this you'd get four items with a hundred left over at 150 per yeah if you didn't buy your your second tier weapon that's absolutely true should we change it then to where nah l l let's try that let's just try that and we'll, we'll kind of see how things go and then we want this to be 150 and 150 okay or one tier two and two tiers two tier ones with none left over bingo bingo that's the key that's the key i want to delete this because i'm not really sure i don't think this is actively affecting anything so i want to go ahead and delete that i'll put it in a comment here give the player a starting amount of gold well i guess we're calling them data fragments for the time being you know what i just realized let me see what the shop looks like real quick because you start out as the spirit and when you choose your character, you immediately go into uh, a random floor. So you wouldn't really know unless you, yeah, see the spirit needs to be, needs to not be able to equip anything. Let's do this then. Let's put a portal down here. I, I hate that the portals are under door. I, I can't say I understand that. Let's do stepping, uh, fixed. Do frequency higher. Okay. Portals act as doors. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I never think of portal or magic circle as a door. I guess we'll just call this portal. And then we'll actually take this common event out. Uh, we'll control a switch that says character chosen. Okay, let's call this first character chosen just to be sure. First character chosen on. And then we need to make a conditional branch that if first character chosen is on or is off then this happens we need to change all of these over actually i guess we also need to turn self switch a on we turn that switch on and then we need it to fade the screen back in that seems like the right event we we might just do it like a character select screen and then the character just comes here. I don't know. I haven't decided.